being set free. She would see, and you know, Psalm 107, verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. That's what she was doing. And because of those steps she took, she has now learned that after her deliverance, she needs to take dominion. After your deliverance, you must take dominion. Amen. To take what's rightfully yours and live in the victory of Jesus. Because I've got beef with certain deliverance ministries, amen. Just how things are done. I'm going to mention that in a moment. But what I'm preaching to you is taking what's rightfully yours. Take dominion over things. So we're going to go into the history of that. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Are we ready, church? Yes. I'm going to read to you verse 27. Then pause, then read verse 28. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. We are created to reflect God. When people look at humanity... We should portray the glory of God. That's the intention that God has. God's rules, God, God reigns, amen. God creates, God loves, God causes things to grow, and God sustains things. We are called to do the same. We're called to do the same thing. We can never be God, but we are his representatives. Verse 28 says, and God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful. And multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. That's the word I want to teach you. To have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the birds of, of, of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Have dominion. Amen. Just a, a side note. That's not vegan doctrine. Amen. We, we're meat eaters. Amen. We take dominion over every animal, over every beast. Amen. But anyway. This is a call to have rulership. God said to them, you, are, you will rule over what I've given you. I've given you the earth. The word dominion, we're talking about having mastery, having lordship, charge over something. In the Latin, it's the word dominio. In the Hebrew, it's the word rodo, which is ruling or ownership. It's a hierarchical term that there are things under us that we have things in our oversight. There's areas that are, that are not out of our control, but we are able to guide them and able to put things in place that can benefit us, amen. Air, we can make areas that bless us. We can make things work for us. That's what dominion is. The Garden of Eden is the intended way for life, uh, it, 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 the intended way of life for us. And I know that we've lost it through the fall, but Christ is our way back to dominion. Amen. The Garden of Eden is a picture of man's relationship with God. What you see in the Garden of Eden, when you take a bird's eye view, you are seeing God and man together. That's what, and that's what happens when we get, we get saved. Amen. We were separated, but then through Christ... It is now God and man together again. Yeah. The church is God and man together. This is like a picture of the Garden of Eden. Yeah. It is God and man walking together. The Garden of Eden is a picture of what God wants for the Christian life. Your sphere in life. Maybe it's not a plot of land. Maybe it's not a cattle. Maybe it's not taking dominion over the birds of the air. Maybe you don't own parrots or whatever they are. But there's, there's something in your life. You've got a lot in life. You've got some influence somewhere. You're, it's your God-given task. You're able to rule it. You're able to know it. You're able to cause it to do what you say. There's areas that are physical areas. There's areas in the spirit. There's areas in the practical. You must have dominion over it. Over your spiritual life, over your physical life. And so I want to give you three points today. And the first point is this. Dominion means you take personal responsibility. Second thing, we're going to go through it. Second thing, dominion keeps the devil out. Third thing, dominion gives you freedom. So let's go. The first thing, dominion means you take 
responsibility. Adam and Eve had lost dominion in the fall. Follow me, church. Adam and Eve and Satan. In the garden, dominion was lost because Adam and Eve did not take ownership over their actions. Mm. Hear me out. Yeah. Quick history lesson on humanity losing dominion. Genesis 3, verse 9. After they fell, it says, But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? This is the sticky point. We know that he ate. He sinned. Verse 12, The man said, The woman you gave to be with me. She gave me the fruit of the tree and I ate. He's like, hey, it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it was the woman that you gave. It was like, double, not me. <laughs> it was your intention and it was her actions. <laughs> it wasn't me. So, he passed the blame to Eve. What did Eve say? Verse 13, then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the blame's not on Adam anymore, the blame's not on Eve. Who's taking the responsibility and ownership of what happened? The serpent. God spoke to the man first. Man represents it, the representation of dominion. The man did not take ownership of his mistakes. He passed the blame to Eve. And by doing that, sin, uh, she, she, uh, she took the place of dominion over him. And if you look at the curse later on, it says, your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. You will want dominion over him. Because he passed the blame. What do we see? God spoke to the woman. The servant deceived me. It wasn't me. She passed the blame, responsibility to the serpent. We saw all the curses from there on, but who did the serpent pass the blame to? Nobody. Adam and Eve lost dominion because they didn't take ownership over their actions. But look at this. The serpent was now in the position to take dominion because he took ownership of what happened. But listen, I know he doesn't say anything, but here we go in Genesis 3, 14 onwards. Instead of Adam having, having a submissive wife, the way God established it, the curse would be that she would try and rule over him. The woman has pain, sin entered, the devil was cursed, but he became, the Bible says, the ruler of darkness and dominions and principalities. He, the Bible calls him the prince of the power of the air. The Bible even says in Luke 4, when he tempts, when he tempts Jesus himself, he says in Luke 4, 6, and the devil said to him, all this authority I will give to you and their glory. He's talking about the kingdoms of the earth. Fill the earth and subdue it. He's, he's talking about the kingdoms of the earth. And he says, all this I will give to you, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. But I thought that was us. We were we meant to be ruling. Delivered and handed to him. Humanity were meant to possess, fill the earth and subdue, but, but, but they listened to Satan, and now it's not in his dominion. The, the, they lost dominion when they passed the responsibility. They lost their God-given authority when they passed the blame. They lost ownership when they didn't own it. The point being this, you will lose dominion when you don't confess. You will lose dominion when you don't own up. You will lose dominion when you don't get a handle on the certain areas in your life. Amen. Your God-given areas, if you don't take ownership over it, it's going to be handed over to something else. You're going to lose control. Many people blame circumstances, upbringing, and, you know, they, to take the heat off themselves. I understand it has a place. But people don't want to get the blame, like Adam and Eve. But I'm not talking about just areas of demonic oppression, but I'm talking about all areas. The devil wants to mess with your, the areas of your life, both physically and spiritually. If an area of life is simply just unkept, it gets out of control. Like a, it's like a garden that's not maintained. 
Weeds grow, rats, grass snakes. I moved into a house with uh, me and my wife moved into a house before. Uh, the guy didn't take care of the garden. There was anthills everywhere. The pile of anthills. Had to get a rotavator and turn over all the soil. This big old machine. Because when you lose the million, it's extra work to get it back. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to take ownership, amen? Listen, if things are out of control in your life, you've got to say, listen up, this is my garden, this is my relationship with God, this is my issue, this is my church, this is my marriage, this is my mind, this is my job, this is my money, amen? The dominion starts with you. The dominion starts when you take ownership and say, God, I am going to fix things. God, I, I, am, I am devoting myself to getting this thing sorted. Amen. I'm not going to whine. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to make excuses. This is my life. It's my future. I've got to do something. Yeah. So the second thing, the second lesson is this. Dominion keeps the devil out. Mm. We're getting a little bit spiritual now, so fasten your seatbelts. We've seen deliverances in this revival. Hallelujah. Amen. Soul ties were broken on Sunday night. Yeah. Tormented spirits in the mind on Monday were cast out. Heaviness was lifted from people's lives. Amen. The spirit man was being refreshed. And now Jesus says, when those spirits leave, he says there's something else that, that you need to consider. In Matthew 12, 43, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest. I won't elaborate on that, but just, just bear with me. And finally, he finds none. And then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. The house being your body, your soul. And when he comes, he finds it empty and swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of the man was worse than the first. So shall it be with this wicked generation. In context, he's talking about a generation. But he's giving you a spiritual truth here. Casting out a demon is more than just... Prayer, manifestation, shaking on the floor, vomiting, coughing, you know, uh, and, and crying. It's more than that. Casting out a spirit and having, and having a spiritual deliverance, it's about taking back territory from Satan. In your life, in your mind, in your soul, and it's brought it even to the city that we live in. Matthew 12 makes the link. It's like a spiritual, it's like a spiritual house renovation. Amen. Yeah. A house that is swept in order, you know, when it mentions that when the demon comes and finds the house swept in order, a house swept in order or a soul that is swept in order for a demon is basically, it's when you get delivered and you don't make any changes to your life. Yeah. 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 When you get set free and then you start to fall back into the same thing again. That's, that's, that's ripe and ready for you to go back into that bondage. But the, and the motive of a demon is this, to gain access into the Christian's life by way of tempting them, and then when they agree with the temptation, they sin, and the, the fallen nature is rising up, and then they set up a territory. Demons want to infiltrate, want to frustrate, want to weigh you down, ultimately to destroy your faith and your future and your friendships. And so before salvation, maybe you had... Uh, maybe you had unclean spirits at work in your life. Before salvation, maybe there were strongholds in your mind. There was territory in your life overrun. You were paranoid. You had fear. You had addictions. And many sins that we commit in a past life can, le can leave a long-lasting effect even in salvation. And even during salvation, maybe you've got personality tendencies. Maybe there's tendencies of insecurity or maybe, maybe you're just like super, super cynical. There's other things. But listen carefully. Taking dominion is unlearning some of those habits. Amen. Taking dominion is relearning through the Holy Ghost. It's relearning through Bible teaching. Amen. Constantly responding through what, to what God is saying, through the preaching, through the church, through the ministry. Amen. Yeah. And that's, what, that's how you get dominion. You begin to drive out demons by way of step-by-step -step obedience. During salvation, people get oppressed by demonic forces. Areas of your life, when they are left unrepentant of, when they're left open and unguarded, you're letting the devil in constantly. 
there's areas of the soul that the devil can tamper with. Now, there's certain translations in the Bible about demonic uh, possession and oppression that, you know, uh, I, I do, I do, I read a lot about this. And to say a Christian is demonically possessed is, is, is not really right. Because we're not possessed by a demon. When we're saved, we're possessed by Christ. Yeah. And so I don't believe the devil can fully possess, have complete control over a Christian. But oppression is another thing. Believers can be demonically oppressed by Satan. We're owned by Christ. Ownership means we're his property. But like a wicked man, near Christmas time, he seeks to break into the house and rob your blessings. All he can do is tamper with and vandalize God's property. That's what the devil wants to do. That's what demons do. They tamper with you. They try to vandalize God's property. Influence, lies, lying to you, tempting you, prompting you to make a choice to turn over more areas to him. John 5, 14. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple. Now, was someone who has been set free and made well. Jesus said to him, see, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. He's relating that to Matthew 12, isn't it? We drive out demons, we repent of sin, we get free. But we now must do something different. You've got to put things in place in your life. You can't fall back into the same old things that you did before, amen? Mm. You know, Kira, in the beginning, my, our neighbor, she said, I'm not letting fear back into my life. I'm not letting anxiety rule me again. Mm. As she said, that was how I used to be, but I'm not like that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got to take dominion over generational curses. Mm. you got to take dominion over, over barrenness, things that just aren't working in your life. Sometimes you got to get angry. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Yeah. I refuse this. And then you got to say, I'm going to clean up. Now, the problem I have with certain deliverance ministries is, and not all, but, but many, you get set free, slain in the spirit, it's a whole light show, and, you know, it's... People screaming, frothing at the mouth, demons coming out, and, you know, the preacher's walking around, and he's doing his thing, and amen, uh, I believe that, that these are genuine things, but in, you know, there's, there's some things that are crazy, but sometimes we have to allow for a little bit of crazy, but some, you know, the, the, gen the genuine deliverances, they can get lost in the hype of the moment, and now pay attention, many of them, they are not taught what to do next mm. and how to remain free. Mm. Many go back into the same sin, same places. They go to the same, uh, um, you know, the same uh, friendship groups that they were in before. They talk the same trash about themselves as before. Mm. But there's a truth in the Word of God that we need to be reading Philippians. Two, it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You've got, you've, got to, you've got to do something about this. Amen. You've got to steward and maintain your relationship with God. Parallel to, the Adam, to, to Adam and Eve maintaining the garden. Amen. Tend and keep the garden. The garden is sacred space where man and God dwell together. Therefore, it's a picture of our relationship with God. Adam... Adam was told to tend and keep it. Now it's all good kicking out the serpent in your life. But now it's about keeping him out. Mm -hmm. Jesus ordains that you remain delivered. Amen. Yeah. So I put it like this. Deliverance is the eviction. Dominion is changing the locks. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Write that down. Amen. <laughs> Change things in your life. The features of your spirit man. So here's some tips. You gotta change what you do. You gotta sweep up your house and sweep it well. Get some stuff in order. Maybe you got delivered from porn addictions when you came to Jesus. So downgrade your phone. Close any possible doors. Have an accountability app, amen. If you struggle with social media, guess what you should do? Deactivate the account, mm -hmm. not delete it from your phone. Yeah. Deactivate. There's two, there's two different words, yeah. amen? Yeah. It, just because it disappeared from your phone, it doesn't mean that you're not on it. Amen? Yeah. 
deactivates. You plant the living from fear or depression or anxiety and excessive overthinking. You've got to arm your soul with scriptures. Maybe memorize them. Pray those scriptures. Quote them to yourself. Amen? Yep. So change what you do. So you need to change people that you hang around with. Look at good examples around you. Another tip is this. Speak out your dominion. Just speak it out. Just say, I'm not letting X, Y, Z back into my life. Yep. I'm not letting it happen. Amen. Amen. I'm not allowing fear to overrun my mind anymore. I'm not allowing lust to destroy my mind. Mm. I'm not allowing these things. I refuse to succumb to fear. I speak the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to worry about my finances and spiraling out and controlling my mind. I will not let my marriage crumble. I refuse to allow my kids to behave this way. Yeah. Right. Take the dominion. Speak it out. Psalm 107 verse 2 again. Let the, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Who he has redeemed from trouble. Another one, you know, another tip is you can fast. From time to time, you can fast. Fasting is not just an extra boost for answering prayers, but it's self-control over the flesh. Mm. Amen. Amen. So the flesh's power gets weakened as the spirit gets stronger. You know, I use the word uh, um, control, you know, and fasting gives you self-control. We can also say fasting gives you dominion. Mm. Yeah. Fasting gives you more dominion to the spirit than the flesh. Mm. It's part of the reason, you know, I believe we saw the differences in the revival. You know, our church in Walsall, we were just fasting and praying. We fasted and prayed for 10 days and we broke it every evening. Amen. Um, so, you know, we, we're not that spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> we broke the fast every evening, but we did 10 days. And we were praying for this revival that God would do something. We make room for the spirit. Yeah. I'll give you a story and then we're going to close with dominion gives you freedom. Listen, in, in Warsaw we took dominion. Many of you were there in 2019, or oh, no, not 2019, 2021. The thefts, the break-ins, the, the drama. And we had a prayer meeting and some of you were there and we prayed. And we prayed over every room. We walked around the building and we prayed and we said, God, we take dominion. These enemies of God cannot rob our stuff anymore. Yeah. They were robbing kids' bags. <laughs> they were eating our leftover Bible study food. It was crazy. They were leaving, you know, tobacco in the corner of the room. They took kettles. They took extension beads. They took things that didn't even work. <laughs> but listen, we prayed. And he said, that you're not coming here anymore. And after that moment, they did not show up once. Amen. Nothing else was taken. Amen. And now we have testimonies of dominion. You know, Joseph and Agnes Gabriel in our, in our church, they are a picture of dominion. Yeah. They've been in the Walsall Church for 16 years. Mm. So long the church has been open. And they had to fight for their place in the spirit. Ups and downs, lefts and rights. And now they have dominion. Gabby just passed all her GCSEs, amen, flying colors. They just moved into a new house in, a, in, a, in an area of Warsaw. They've been waiting about six, seven years to actually get this house. The house they were in uh, previously, they wanted to purchase it, but the council said, we're not going to let you purchase it. But then they got put first on the list in that 10-day fast. They got put first on the list to get this house, and only one person that lived in it, it was a new build. Wow. They got the house, and the council said, you can buy this one. Hey, amen. God. Dominion. In their first week, they go and leave the job. And their youngest uh, daughter, Emma, she goes and witnesses to these kids. And so about five of them now come to church. They've been coming to church the past the past couple of weeks. And just Sunday, just gone, they all lifted their hand in children's church to get saved. Amen. Amen. Dominion. Amen. We're, removing people. We're removing evil spirits out of our lives. And we are establishing Eden. Another guy, Mario, many of you know Mario, struggled with homosexuality before salvation, never had a proper job. Came to church, we cast out those demons, he takes dominion, he gets a job at Apple, which he loves, and last month he was recognized as the, high, the one with the highest sales in the job, and listen, people came in at the same time as him, they didn't last, but he's, he's at the top, he's like the top employee on the, on, on the floor, on the shop floor. He got that job 
come after salvation and amen. As you as already know, he's getting he's engaged and getting married next year. Because listen, there is this freedom that comes upon you when you get dominion. Just the, the freedom of to do God's will, liberty, and then the momentum in moving forward. Amen. There's some over there you need to take dominion over there. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. The last thing is this. Dominion gives you freedom. Yes. You sense a relief in many areas of life. Dominion is transferable because it's a principle. If you exercise the dominion that God has given you in just a certain area, what starts to happen is you're like, you know what? I've got dominion over this area. You start to, start to leak out in other areas. No, I can, I can take this one. I can take this area. I can take this patch of land. I can take this in evangelism. I can take this in my marriage. I can take this in my finances. Because God begins to push you. Amen. There's a momentum that happens. I don't want you to be under the false impression, though, that having dominion is all down to your efforts. Yeah. It's given and purchased by Jesus. Amen. He's given it to you. Yeah. You must exercise what he's given to you. Yeah. The Holy Spirit's going to help you do that. You know, the Bible says he's the helper. The Bible says he's the comforter. John 16, 13, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. <laughs> He will show you what needs to be done. When you put things in place, you will experience God's favor and God's grace. I spoke to someone in, uh, in church, they deleted their social media, and they told me, they just said, I just feel free. I'm not distracted. I, I, I don't feel spiritually mucky. I'm not, I'm not scrolling all the time. You know, when you begin to work a job, Getting a job gives you dominion. You get freedom. You get money. Amen. Yeah. You get to bless people. And you get to be blessed. Amen. Amen. And kids, you get to bless your parents. Hallelujah. <laughs> and now we all know the feeling of coming home to a messy house. Amen. Yeah. Some of you are like, yeah, I know. I do something after this revival. Because this revival's busy. <laughs> you know, you get home from work and it's kind of freshen up. You, you, you put on your, your dress or your suit. And then, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll leave that till later. <laughs> I'll leave that till Thursday. Amen. <laughs> things are out of control. We need to clean. We need to put things in the right place. But then finally, when you clean your house and you can just walk around with no stress, so clean. You gain dominion, amen, in your house. Yeah. There's a freedom now to do what you want because you're not tripping over mess and pieces of Lego and whatever else. <laughs> Is left and plug suckers. Has anyone ever done that? Beer foot on a plug. Ah! <laughs> but anyway, in our main text, I conclude. Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. A freedom is spreading the glory of God into all areas of your life and beyond the church doors. Amen. Amen. It is God's will for you to be fruitful. And multiply what he's already given to you. Amen. Amen. You're a steward of, what, of the gifts of God. You're a steward of the graces of God. Amen. Amen. And so you take that and say, I'm going to spread this into all areas of my life. I'm going to spread it to my children. I'm going to spread it everywhere with people that I meet. Amen. I'm going to walk in victory. Amen. Dominion is a choice. Yeah. God's will for humanity is to have dominion in the physical areas and the spiritual areas. That was purchased by the appearance of God through the Son, Jesus Christ. In 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And, the, and he did that by his blood. The blood is where you become free. The blood of Jesus um, washed your sin away. The blood of Jesus purchased your dominion. It's the currency. That is the currency, the blood of Jesus, that purchased your freedom. Purchase the authority of God at work in your life. So let's exercise it. Amen. Yeah, We're going to pray about some things. Amen. A final Holy Ghost explosion. Amen. Let's bow our heads in this place. Hallelujah. I want to put the call out to people. Amen. There's people here you're not saved. There's people here you're not right with God. You need to be. The Bible says he who sins is a slave to that sin. Sex outside of marriage. Addiction.
conviction lies on our pain, hatred, and forgiveness, bitterness, envy, drunkenness, going to places you shouldn't go to. Your conscience tells you when you're doing something that God, that this pleases God. And this sends you to the devil's hell, where you have no dominion at all, where you do become a possession of the Savior. But God demonstrated his love towards you, that whilst you were a sinner, Christ died for you. Christ stood in your place and took the punishment that you deserve for the things you've done. And he says, I want to forgive you. I want to wash you. I want to help you. I want to forgive you. Jesus Christ wants to set you free today. If you're here and you know that's you, you've, you've sinned, but you want Jesus to forgive you. You want to have heaven as your home. You want to receive him as Lord and Savior. I'll ask you to do one thing. Raise your hand in the air. Anyone in this place, if you're itching and you feel the Holy Ghost, and there's, you know, he you says, he's speaking to me. It's not me. That's God speaking to you. Raise your hand. You say, raise your hand and get right with Jesus. Raise your hand and get right. You're a backslider. You need to get right with Jesus. Raise your hand in the air. Amen. Don't let your pride stop you. Don't let all oh, people think of me. I want to get right. Raise up your hand. Get right with Jesus. Come back to him. Turn away from your sin. Raise your hand. Hallelujah. I turn the call. I turn the call to believers then. Christians in this place. There's areas. Maybe it's your mind. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's, it's something. You, you, can, you can see the devil's got he's trying to get his hand on an area. And you're saying no. Maybe you've been delivered from certain things. And now it's like, yeah, I want to arm myself. I want to put these things in place. You want to get right, you want to get things right, you want to set things up so you're a success in your Christianity. Whatever God has spoken to you, church, these altars are open. Let's come and pray. Amen. Let's come and pray about this. Hallelujah. Let's take dominion in the name of Jesus. Lord, we take dominion. May the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed and so I'm saying. God, you're going to help me. God, you're going to help me. Don't be afraid to say, God, you will help me. Sometimes we, we beg, we like beg God. God, please, God, please. But God is saying, I've, I've already said I'm going to help you. You just say, God, you're going to help me through this. God, you're going to give me victory. Hallelujah. Lord God, touch your people in Jesus' name. Father, pour out your spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Dominion, Father God. Lord, they will take authority in Jesus' name. Lord, they will take authority, Lord God. Authority over the things, oh Lord God, that burden them, Lord. Authority in the name of Jesus, Lord God. They take dominion by the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord God. Hallelujah, Father. Give us strength, Lord God. Give us strength in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus Christ, 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 Lord God.
just going to just pray and just kick out some leftover things, amen? And then we'll, I want us to, uh, if we can, five finish with our take it through to the outer courts um, just after we've prayed, amen? And so, praise God. Praise God. My bro, let me pray for you. You, Greg, Mike, Jane, Sontag, amen. Come forward, let me pray for you. Amen. There's things that you, there's decisions you've got to make. These can be people, but you got to take the lead in. And no one can do it for you. No one can do it for you. Amen. We're going to pray for you. All right? Give him the strength, Lord, to make the right decisions in Jesus' name. Spirit of God, help him, Lord. You give him dominion, Father, right now, for the end of life. To make hard decisions, Lord God. That Father will set you free in the future, Lord God. Hallelujah. This call of God on your life. Amen. It's going to come when you're making some decisions. And it's going to be, it's either this way or that way. It's either God's will or my will. And he's saying, I want to give, he wants to give you the strength to make the right choices. Amen. Amen. But you've got, you've just got to, you've just got to do it. Amen. Father, seal this word in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my brother. Amen. Amen. Let's break some generational curses. Amen. There's, there's generational curses, you know, my granddad suffered, my, my dad suffered, and I suffered. My grandma suffered, um, my mom suffered, and I suffered with the same thing. And so it might have been uh, rooted in witchcraft, there have been witchcraft in your family, um, maybe it's Caribbean nations, African nations, um, uh, Latin nations, or uh, even European nations, amen. Um, we just want to we just want to pray for that. If you if, if you're aware of witchcraft in your history, if you're aware of you know th things that are running in your family, just come and stand here. Just come and stand here. We're gonna pray very quickly. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You just gotta let God do what He's doing. Amen. And so you know we're not we're not expecting you know He's been backflips or anything like that. Just let the Spirit of God break whatever. Had, had held you, amen. If, you, if you're aware of things that are holding you, they're going to be gone after today, amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Just say, Lord Jesus, we break generational curses, things that we've suffered with in our bloodline. We break it, we don't accept it. I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus, dominion. Starts with me because of the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for setting me free. We break these curses in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray about the things that have been struggling with. Amen. Yes, free in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, touch it now. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, set it free now. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, touch me. In Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus. Break the chains right now. Break the chains now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, touch them now in the name of Jesus. If you sense God uh, uh, touching you, amen, that's okay. Amen. Holy Spirit, touch you right now. Break the chains. Break all the chains of witchcraft in Jesus' name. We break the chains of witchcraft right now by the blood of Jesus. Every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of witchcraft and sickness, we break now in Jesus' name. Every evil spirit, leave. Right now in Jesus' name, every evil spirit lead we break it now by the blood of Jesus. Every evil spirit with the generation of curse we break. Set them free in Jesus' name. Set them free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, in Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus, set them free in Jesus' name. Pour out your spirit upon them in Jesus' name. The presence of God touch in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, have your way in the name of Jesus. Every evil spirit, leave her mind alone right now. Every evil spirit, we break your power over her life in Jesus' name. Every evil spirit, that's it. Every evil spirit, that's it. That's it. Jesus' name, help her in Jesus' name. Set her free. For the blood of Jesus Christ, heal her. Yes. Holy Spirit, fill her now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, fill her now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, set her free. For the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Free. Every evil spirit. Leave her alone now. In Jesus' name. Out of Jesus' name. Out of Jesus' name. Leave her alone right now. 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 Leave
we're going to break barrenness, barrenness in finances, barrenness in, in evangelism, amen, uh, barrenness in, in uh, infertility, the womb being closed up, we're going to say, God, open it, amen. amen. This is dominion. We're doing it, amen. We're doing it. And so, um, generational curses, you're free, you step back, amen. And, um, and barrenness in any of those areas, come hither. Amen. We're breaking it in Jesus' name. Let's take the dominion. Don't be like, ah, I'll come up here so many times. And, 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 listen, it's just a fresh anointing. We'll see what that will do. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus we break barrenness because it's not your will. Not your will is your will. to be fruitful and multiply in finances, in childbearing, in evangelism. Fill my life with fruitfulness. We break the spirit that has held us back. In Jesus' name, we declare fruitfulness. I want you to declare it over the specific area that you're praying for now. Amen. Hallelujah. And let's say, Lord Jesus, we confirm this. It shall be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Yes, break barrenness now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of barrenness, leave her in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Every spirit of barrenness, break in Jesus' name. Every spirit of barrenness, we break now. Every spirit of barrenness, we break over this life. Freedom and fruitfulness. Fruitfulness.
can take dominion. Amen. Take dominion. And you, you can do it. Because he's already given it to you. There's, there's, there's this, when, 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 when the Spirit of God got hold you, right, there's not a force. It's like, I let it go stop. Not that much. There's that. It's like an ember. God wants to just pour a little bit of gasoline on you. Amen. Because the, the, the reason why the devil fights so hard for you, especially in life, is because he knows what. why you get worse, Sarah, is because God's redeemed you. And he's, he's directing your life. You can go in life, your life is not good. Amen. Amen. Just keep, keep moving forward, step by step. Hallelujah. This has been amazing. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yes. I won't take up any more of your time. It's been amazing. It really has. And I know we live just, you know, down the road. Um, but Listen, coming home to Mama is, is so, <laughs> so good. Amen. Amen. And um, again, thank you all for having me and my wife. And, and you know, thank you, Pastor and Charlotte. And uh, you know, just thank you for your prayers as well. Walter's mm -hmm. powering on. And uh, and you've had a few testimonies just in this revival. I can't reveal all of them because some of them said, ah, no, wait until Sunday. Uh, but, but amen. You've had about maybe three breakthroughs since this revival has happened. Amen. In Warsaw. Amen. Okay. So, God's on the move, amen. Yes, amen. And now, let's return to our seats and let's give God praise as Pastor Cole and Jane enter the room. Amen. So, we're going to close in the word of prayer tonight. Uh, and let's, let's be people of dominion. And take it with you. Remember, as a Christian, you take the presence of God with you. Uh, we all love this place. We all want to be here in the presence of God. But you take the presence of God with you. Go and take dominion. Uh, we're going to close in a word of prayer. Uh, perhaps one, where are you? Uh, you could be closing prayer for us tonight. Oh, he's got no, he's not around. Um, Chip, why don't you close in prayer this evening? Lord God, we're so grateful, God, for this week, God. 